Hey everyone, this is Harold with Buck Eye Light Reviews. Got an exciting light today. We have the Phoenix HL18R. We're going to be doing a pretty in-depth, fairly in-depth review. And later in the next day or so, we'll be following up this review of part two, which will be the trail test, which includes beam shots and getting this light out on in the trail where this light belongs out in its natural habitat, the real wilderness. I'm always going to do that. And whoever knows that joke knows why I'm saying it. So the HL18R is, again, a newer light from Phoenix. And by the way, we're going to be doing a lot of giveaways, guys. I know a lot of you guys are seeing this, but you're not subscribing. And if you're not subscribing, you're going to be missing out on free Phoenix lights. So hit subscribe. Do it. Get it done with. And pretty soon I'll be putting some posts out to drop your name in the comments to want to like. But you can't win if you don't subscribe. That's the way it works. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So, uh, my buddies at Phoenix Worldwide in over the pond in China sent me this light for review. Um, obviously, I do honest reviews. Even though it's a review where they gave me the light, I'm still extremely honest about how I do my reviews. Um, and I do have some, some thoughts about this light. For one, I love it. It's an extreme departure from a light that they came out with a while back called the CL26R. Some of you might have seen that. Um, the CL26R is similar in many ways, um, but very different in others. You know, you could look back on the history of this light. This light was kind of a, it kind of broke the mold for Phoenix, right? Everybody and their mother was making lights that look like this. And Phoenix stepped out on its little ledge and, and did it its own way. And I think it was a very successful light. So this is kind of the answer to the older CL26R, the HL18R. And I believe this is the successor to the 26. Although you could still get this 26 brand new. Um, this is a great light. It really is. This is a rocking little light. But the new one is a whole different animal. So let's dive into that. The HL18R is a seven mode light you have four modes in spotlight three modes in floodlight and let's kind of go through those real quick you'll notice there's a battery meter on the light obviously as it drops down to 75 you'll see three 50 you'll see two etc etc this will light up when it's charging as well up on top you have very simple ui spot flood Press short hold on. You'll also notice how warm this light is. Look at that warmness. I'm going to hold it up against something white. It is super warm for you guys that love warm lights. This thing is the warmest light I have by Phoenix by far. So, just cycle through some modes. Nice and simple, right? In the flood... Press and hold. SOS. You can toggle right back. You can kind of toggle back and forth between spot and flood. And you'll notice how much wider uh, the, the, the flood is versus the spot. The LED they used in this so the, it was a Cree XP3G with a very warm 10 on the Kelvin scale. The and that is the main LED. These two side LEDs I've never heard of before. There are some white little guys uh, made. They're called Everlight 2835 whites. I've never heard of Everlight before. I do like them. I was kind of comparing it to the flood on this old guy, and very similar beams really. Um, this one's eh, the optic was a bit frosted on the eight on this one. As you can see, let me turn that on here. And the Phoenix is a bit warmer. You know, I always said I don't like warm lights that much. But here's the reality between warm and cool lights on the trail. If you're going to be doing a lot of night hiking, uh, where you're out for four, five, six, seven, eight hours in darkness, the thing about white LED, really cool lighting, is that, that bluish tends to come out and it will strain your eyes. Even though you're getting a better look at the ground, um it does tend to have more eye strain and, and on light and long hikes i've noticed that you know i noticed that i started getting a headachey eyes were kind of hurting 
a warm light will help prevent that because it takes a lot of that bluish out of the scene um, and it's more comfortable for your eye yes although it may not give you the best color renditioning on the ground it's still very comfortable for the eyes and for hours and hours in the outdoors on a trail that's kind of important right you know so again very simple ui with it um simple as simple as cake it's the typical phoenix body i believe the german i believe this is german made part of this is the shell is i'd have to confirm that i heard something about the 26 it was like that the ratcheting system is nice um got about the spot angle the spot beam is an angle of 13 percent the flood is 84 this has a 60 percent tilt mechanism so plenty of tilt in it i'm not sure as the old ones how much tilt there was but let's take a look here i think it might be Close, if not the same. It's pretty close to me. The light is IP66 rated. That is for water and dust intrusion. Uh, meaning, you know, it'll take a pretty good beating in the rain and it should be fine. I wouldn't submerge this light though. Um, it's not IP68. So it can hold out a lot of dust. It could take quite a bit, but I would not um, submerge this light under any circumstances. It is micro USB charging. They have not put the new Type C in here, and maybe that's because, honestly, the micro USB is a lot smaller, right? Covers pretty nice. Fits in there nice and snug. I wouldn't see. Let's do the yank test here and see if we can get it to come out. It keeps rolling back that tip, but it will not open. So, yeah, it's not coming out. So that's good. That's always a good thing. And there's another difference too, is you'll notice that on the tilt mechanism, it's kind of like built in there, right? It's a little bit more defined. Whereas the CL26R was just a simple hinge, um, like so. So I do like the new system quite a bit better. The other thing that really changed was the headband. The old headbands were like this. I had the reflective bits on them. They had a bit of silicone inside. It was kind of a nice, thick, heavy material. But check those out. I love what they did with the headband. It's more comfortable than you think. It's a much lighter headband in terms of weight and bulk. Packs down a lot smaller for backpack use or if you're throwing this in your pocket, it's not gonna take up as much room. And it's breathable. The old style's fine, but you gotta understand these things would turn into sweat bands and hold a lot of sweat. This can actually funnel that sweat away to the top and could help it dry quicker. To me, that's a win right there. I love the new headband. Plus, I think it looks, I don't know. What do you all think? Tell me which one you think looks better. All right. I don't know, that new one's pretty nice, right? Oh, this does have a lockout. And there's an ultra low standby current, so when you have dry cells in these, uh, it reduces the leakage. Now, one of the things that really made these two guys different, and again, they're both rechargeable, right? They're both pretty close. The one big difference is this on this one. I can cycle through the modes, press and hold, and boom, I have a turbo mode of 500 lumens. That doesn't have that. Instead, you just, you just click to turbo. You don't have to press and hold, and it's 100 lumens less. But here's the thing, and honestly, 400 lumens is a lot for a headlamp. I can hike all day at 70, right? So here's the big difference. So on the older CL26R, the one thing that people noticed really quick with this light, is you can't get to the battery. It's a sealed unit that has a hard shell, I believe, maybe a soft shell lithium polymer, a lipo battery in there you cannot get to. So the bad news about this light is once the battery's dead, it's a throwaway light. I never was a fan of that. But a lot of lights are like that. And honestly, I've had this for years. Used it quite a bit. And I've noticed no degradation in, in the battery quality. What sets this guy apart, what makes him so different, is that he comes with a lithium polymer hard shell battery pack built in. 1300 milliamp hours. If you hear that banging in the back, they're destroying a bridge down the street. And they're building a new bridge. So they got this giant jackhammer thing that's been beating the hell out of everything for two months and it's really annoying so if you hear crunch 
crunch that's what that is so to get to that battery all we simply have to do is lift a little bit and there it is ARB LP 1300 3.7 volts 1.3 amp hours and it just pops right out like so so you should be able to I'll have to confirm with Phoenix <clears throat> These should be easy to get as a replacement now because it's model numbered. <clears throat> Pardon me. So <clears throat> I wouldn't see any problems with that. Now, if you look inside of it too, lithium ion and three triple A's. Let's check it out. You have to do that with this light. And I keep hearing a large aircraft, and President Trump just landed in our town. He may be taking off from Wright Patterson, so I, I thought I heard the airplane. So if we look up suddenly, you see a 747 in the sky, and that's him. So yeah, there you go, right? The battery indicator works also on the alkaline batteries. How cool is that, right? So what happens now is we have that flexibility of going, you know what? I want to use triple A's or I want to use these triple A's are always a great are always great um, simply because you could buy these by the truckload they don't cost anything they're really cheap they do pretty good in cold weather it depends um, so you know from a standpoint of, of versatility that's extremely hard to be right I mean you've got the versatility of having the lipo pack which, again, I will confirm whether or not you could order more of these. It would be nice to be able to carry an extra one with you. Or use AAAs. And honestly, I've got the runtime chart right here. And you'll notice lithium and you'll notice AAA on the runtime chart. And I think the lithium is referring to the built, you know, the, the, the pack that comes with it versus AAAs. You can see that in some cases, and AAAs are giving you actually better runtime for the same amount of lumens. So there's really no substantial change, if any, that I could see. Uh, and I don't have the equipment to properly test that. So, yeah, I would say the AAAs are going to be pretty hard to beat, especially on that 70 lumen mode, because that's a good hiking right there. You, I would use the 130 on super technical terrain, 400 if I really need to get my eyes on something. And 30, I'd probably ignore that. I'd probably use the floodlight modes around camp, like the 30. Um, so I really, really, really do like uh, the run times with the triple A's. That is astonishing. 70 hours. Now, how flat is that regulation? I do not know. Um, I saw nothing of no evidence supporting a graph of if it was flat or if it was more linear and slowly went down as the battery burned. I don't know. Phoenix does not release that information to me. But for 130 lumens at 12 hours, I want to assume that there's going to be a gradual drop. Kind of like the HM50R, and it's more common than people realize. I may be wrong, but I think the 70 and the 30 is almost flat regulation. So again, take a good look at that for a second. And that kind of answers a lot of questions there that you may have about the light. So yeah it's great man i love this thing um now it's also available now i got the black model right and it's it's kind of a it's black but it's kind of a semi-translucent case they also have this baby in a blue so you get that same strap but you get a semi-translucent blue case so you do have that option So, the trail test coming up for this bad boy. I really do look forward to that trail test. I think it's going to, as they say, shine a light on this light, as they say. And we'll see what happens. Um, I'm looking forward to, to really running this light to his paces. Dropped a battery there. And seeing, you know, what this light can do. Uh, what its limitations are. What do I not like? Um, well... The things I do like for one a lockout I got the versatility too of two different types of batteries and rechargeable at that it's a warmer light I'm gonna have to learn to warm up to that because this lights gonna be used quite a bit to me um, but I will 
I, I, I will admit the warmer light will do better on the trail. What do I not like? Well, it's a three letter word that sounds like the word red. Um, I just wish, and I always have wished, that Phoenix would use and start incorporating a red light feature. Um, the, how can I say this? Start putting red lights in them. And part of the reason is backpackers and hikers, you know, sometimes we do things in groups and we'll camp out at night in groups in the backcountry. And there's nothing worse, right? Then your buddy coming towards you and going right in your face. Hey, can you mind if I borrow some of your stuff, you know, and you're blinded, right? It's dark out there and, and just use a red light call. It helps. Yes, there is a very low setting flood, but still it's above your head. It usually is pointing down in front of your eyes. Your night vision can be shot, which is why another red light is such a good thing is not only do you keep your neighboring campers and hikers happy but you've got better night vision so please phoenix start adding red lights to the lights um what else do i not like that's a tough one i think that would be my biggest complaint would be the lack of red light the ui is simple press long press and go and just cycle through press to turn off the headband hits all the marks um, I'm in love with it guys. Tell me what you think of it. Um, I will be doing a trail test on this, a thorough trail test, taking it out, putting a few miles on it, see how it acts on the real world environment in a real actual wilderness, um, as opposed to some people that don't know what a wilderness is, but I ain't going to drop names, but, um, yeah, drop in the comments what you think about this light, what you don't like about it, what you'd like to see me do in the test. Um, I will also take him out on the trail with me because I think it would be important to kind of see where this type of light for Phoenix was and where it is. And really compare and contrast the two. And do understand, they're, they're, although they look very much the same, they are very different lights. Uh, they behave very differently. So, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, what you get with it? Yeah, just... Plain packaging, you get a USB cable manual, and this very simple packaging. So, um, my overview video kind of talked about that. So, again, hit the subscribe button because very soon, people, very soon, I will be giving out free Phoenix flashlights. But we have to hit a couple hundred subscribers. That's the way it goes. I haven't put an official post out yet. I'm trying to get a few more subscribers up before I do that. Um, but we will be giving lights away and everybody likes freebies and they love Phoenix lights, right? Come on You know you want one so hit that subscribe button hit that like button share this on your pages and tell a friend and In a few days if not the next night or so uh, part two will be coming out. We'll be actually trail testing this light Cheers